feeling about the sensational headlines projecting doom and gloom in the real estate market? Sellers, are you worried that you missed the multiple offer market? Buyers, are you frustrated and just waiting for the prices and the interest rate to drop before you make your move? Well, we are here to ease your worry and frustration by giving you the straight story using the current stats and trends in our local Slow County real estate market. Be sure to stay tuned to the end when Daryl provides us with the best available interest rates and loan options. Serena Rhoda here with my teammate and co-host Jennifer Dawson at Platinum Properties. We are fortunate to have lending expert Daryl Stoltz with us from Pacific Trust and Mortgage. Thank you. Here Good to be here. Thanks for coming. He's here to provide some insight on the pre-qualification, pre-approval process the current loan interest rates and options available for buyers on the Central Coast. And he'll also fill us in on projections for the interest rate trends. Thank you so much for joining us today, Daryl. It's my pleasure. Yes, we're excited to have you. But before we jump into all of your great info, I wanted to share San Luis Obispo housing market stats. We're just gonna look at residential only for February. The median price held at 750, which was exactly the same as last month. And it's really interesting to look at it now compared to last year. Last year, the average price was 775. So we've seen a 9.6 decrease from last year at this time. For months of inventory for February, we were at eight, but this morning I re-ran the numbers and we're down to four. Wow. So we're seeing a big drop in that already. Short supply. Mm -hmm. Number of sales increased to 146. Last month it was 117, so that's good news. I see a little more activity <laughs> on the market. Base to sell was 45, although this count was based off of escrows getting opened in December and January, so we're expecting to see this number drop for March stats because we're back into the multiple offer market again, so that's exciting. Yes. Yes. We definitely have noticed that here at Platinum Properties, the Rota team had five listings in the last two months. All of them received multiple offers, ranging anywhere from two all the way up to eight. And four of the five listings ended up in overbidding scenarios. So Jen, can you share a little bit about your experience with your listings and if you're noticing any trends? Yeah, definitely. So the two listings that I currently have, they both received multiple offers. One even received three all cash offers and it's gonna go for six figures over, which is pretty crazy. The trends showing heading into a spring market that the number of sales has improved by 25% over last month in the multiple offer market is back. Another historical trend just to keep on the radar is that the market typically flattens before you're gonna see an upward trajectory in prices. So for all of you buyers out there, if you're waiting to see prices drop, the Central Coast is in its own unique little bubble and we may have bottomed out. So you know what you think. Well, Jen, that sounds promising for sellers yeah. who are priced appropriately. Mm -hmm. For buyers out there who are waiting for the market to crash, hopefully those trends are piquing your attention. The low inventory is even lower when we're considering first-time home buyers, right? So Definitely. there's we, more competition, yeah. more competition. a hierarchy of buyers. Mm -hmm. Yes, and we're eliminating a lot of the homes that are over eight hundred thousand dollars if they're in a fifty-five and over community, or now even condos. A lot of home buyers post-COVID are working from home and want to have a single-family residential home on a small lot, maybe with some outdoor space mm -hmm. versus a condo. So as Jen mentioned, we did run the stat today again for inventory, which is down to four months mm -hmm. um, compared to what it was running at eight months in February. So just in a short few weeks, down to four in Slow County. What would you consider a balanced market versus one with short supply? Six months. That's what I was yeah. thinking. Mm -hmm. yeah. So right around six months. Once again, the lower inventory is creating that competitive market that you're talking about, Daryl. Yeah. Jen and I would like to share three factors that would help them prepare for that. Definitely. Factor number one is writing non-contingent offers. So when I'm thinking non-contingent, what comes to mind first is to not have to sell a home. I've had several clients that have been first-time home buyers and they've beaten out seasoned buyers because simply they don't have a house to sell. Mm -hmm. and in some of the cases, their down payment has been less than what the other offers have been, but just simply that they didn't have a house to sell, they got the 
the offer accepted and were in, they were able to close escrow and get their home. And then also when we're talking about contingencies in the last few years, we've seen buyers release all of their contingencies with the offer. That is case by case and I would definitely recommend chatting with us before you consider writing an offer like that because it depends on what disclosures are available, what reports, and how the loan is structured. It's very important in a situation like that to discuss that with your lender because mm -hmm. if you're removing contingencies, for instance, a loan contingency right. or an appraisal contingency, we would tell you that that's risky. Yeah. So we, on our end, really have to be sure mm -hmm. about what we're doing. And, and um, by putting a file through underwriting first and, and doing a lot of the legwork yeah. up front mm -hmm. and by following a checklist, that type yeah. of thing, we as a lending company can be more certain mm -hmm. of that type of process and more confident so that we protect your buyers and their deposit. I love that, that Daryl, and we're going to jump into more about getting pre-qualified and pre-approved, and Daryl will explain what the difference is. Serena, just back to these offers of no contingencies, it makes me think of the listing you had at Arena. I believe there were eight offers, and then the one that we ended up closing, it was cash, 14 days, right? Yes, yeah. it was an all cash, 14 day, non-contingency offer on an as-is definite fixer property. Yeah. But the sellers were proactive and had many of the reports, pretty much all of the reports mm -hmm. available to the buyer, and the buyer was able to sign off on all the contingencies knowing that information going into it. Yeah. Granted, it was all cash, so it's not dependent on the loan approval mm -hmm. and the loan process there. It was very quick. Yeah, so cash buyers out there, yes, cash <laughs> is definitely king. And buyers out there, we always <clears throat> encourage you to consult with us before moving forward with an offer with releasing all contingencies. I'd like to share factor number two that will help our buyers write a competitive offer would be receiving the alerts for the coming soon listings on the California Regional MLS, which can be done by contacting a local realtor such as Jen or myself. This will help you get scheduled for a showing sooner than later and help you decide whether or not you'd want to make an offer on the home. So recently we've noticed buyers who wait for a week and even a weekend in some cases have already missed their opportunity as the sellers have received offers because they're priced right and you as a buyer might miss your opportunity to even see the home. And I've already seen that with the last few listings I've had. I've had agents call me and their clients are upset because they didn't get to see the home in time. They just saw it when it hit the market and just online. They didn't have the coming soon feature. They didn't even have a portal set up. And so it really does make a difference with how fast our market moves around here. I agree. Jen, can you tell us about factor number three? Yes, I would love to. So factor number three is to get pre-qualified or better yet, pre-approved by a lender such as Daryl over here. Daryl, can you tell us a little bit about what is the difference between getting pre-qualified and pre-approved? That's a great question. You know, pre-qualified is, is we talking. Mm -hmm. You know, usually that starts with a phone call, an upfront interview where I'll ask questions. Number one, do you have a down payment saved? Mm -hmm. Number two, on a, on a scale of one to 10, 10 being the best, how would you rate your credit history? And I like to listen. Mm -hmm. You know, the ones that say nine or 10, I have good credit, that type of thing. You can tell when they're confident. Yeah. The ones that say, well, maybe a six or a seven, and I'll say, okay, well, why would you say that? Yeah. And again, I like to listen. I like to let them talk. I'll ask them how much money they make, and then you know, I can begin to do some figures based upon this much down payment saved, mm -hmm. your other monthly payments in terms of um, liabilities, credit you might have and, and the income that you've produced, you qualify for X amount of dollars. That's pre-qualification. To go one step further, and what is actually better is a pre-approval. That's where we run a credit report. We take a loan application. In some cases, we'll put that loan application into underwriting. We'll run the automated approval, mm -hmm. and the, the computer will weigh income, assets, credit, and property, and give us a decision like approve eligible, that loan can be sold and banked in the secondary market. And we as a direct lender can be certain of that process that we can fund that loan 
in addition to following a complete checklist and making sure that we have everything from that client up front. That's great. And I was going to ask, have you seen an increase in buyers getting to be approved and to qualify with our changing market with the rates going up? No doubt about it. Our, our business can be a little bit seasonal mm -hmm. sometimes. And with rates coming down a little bit yeah. in January, um, that definitely has triggered more activity. The market is always changing, not just the real estate market, but the interest rates and things like that. So we've definitely seen an uptick in loan applications, that type of thing, and people that are re-upping their pre-approvals, making themselves ready. And we're seeing that more of that demand is coming back as interest rates, although they've been fluctuating, mm -hmm. have been coming down a little bit. That's great. So if someone wants to get started with all of this, how do they do that? The best way is to have them reach out to one of you or to me. And we initiate that process. Um, sometimes it begins with a phone call, mm -hmm. but I ask you know that they call, text, or email. We begin that conversation and fill out a loan application either online or we do that by phone. And in many cases, make an effort to meet with them in person. The more planning that we can do up front to help that client, the better. That way we're more prepared. Yes, I love that. Thank you. Some buyers are hesitant to contact a lender, maybe for fear that it might cost them something. How much is it for someone to get in touch with you for a pre-approval or pre-qualification? That's a great question. I'm really glad you asked it. I get paid when I fund a loan, and it's a process. Mm -hmm. For some people, it can be really quick for them to go through the pre-approval process and to find that home of their dreams. It can happen very quickly. For some people, it, it can take months, in some cases, years. There is no charge to come and see me and to consult. So it's just how we work for you. That, that's right. And, and so I, often I, I'll tell people, please come in for a free mm -hmm. one hour consultation. Certainly if it takes more time, we, we are very generous with our time. Mm -hmm. That we want to establish what their comfort level is with the monthly payment and build around that so that they can own the home and so that the home does not own them. But anyway, the, there is no charge for the pre-approval process and really it is the starting point so that we can begin to help them with the widest array of products available. Nice. No, thank you. Another question I've had by buyers recently is they are waiting maybe a year, let's say that's their projected date of wanting to start working, when would be the best time for them to get in touch with you? The sooner the better, because in, in some cases we'll begin again by running that credit report. If we run the credit report, there might be things that are unexpected. Perhaps they have some collections or some charge-offs, some things that they were not aware of. It gives us time to respond to that and to help them to clean up their credit in some cases. Or it might be that they're down payment challenged that they need to save more money to afford the type of house that they really want. Um, not everybody knows that the down payment can be entirely gift. There might be a family member out there that's willing to help them. So they'd be able to have that dialogue with their parents or grandparent and uncle to help firm up that down payment in advance is great. And some people might decide to borrow from a retirement fund, like a 401k, rather than liquidating it, which would cause a taxable event, against it and then pay it back it becomes an investment to themselves again just being able to spend time to firm up the down payment clean up credit eventually and sometimes income to qualify can be the challenge it might be somebody that's self-employed and it will give them time to prepare their taxes it's tax season right now or maybe it's a good idea for them to show more income for this year 2022 um, so that they can qualify better to buy a house this year in 2023. Um, there are different tricks in the trade that we can share with our buyers to help them to put their very best foot forward so that we may help to optimize their purchase. We love that. Especially since it's such an individualized process. Every situation is different and you have all the tools and the knowledge to get them to the point where they know what they qualify for so that they're looking at a home that is appropriate for them and in their price range. No doubt about it, a loan is like a puzzle. And so we, we look at that and determine based upon their credit score and the amount of down payment they have saved, whether it be a conventional loan or maybe a governmental loan. We also have private money available. 
matter what their situation is or if they're self-employed, it might be a bank statement loan um, because maybe the tax returns don't clearly indicate that income they need to qualify. Having that consultation up front and, and being able to draw from a wide array of products is a big advantage with our company, Pacific Crest Mortgage. And that way we can help to provide the best solution. That's a good question. Real estate markets are cyclical. Um, I've learned that along the way. I've been through many different cycles. This might be a good tool to cover that. Okay. What looks like a smile here could be the, the cycle of a real estate market. It's pretty hard to establish as markets adjust. It's difficult to determine where we are at the bottom of the market. And for this example, I'm drawing upon Case Schiller and also MBS Highway, my research. What happens is that as markets continue to adjust, and keep in mind interest rates over the past year doubled. I mean, they went from roughly three or four percent up to seven percent and above in some cases. We've seen the rates um, also come down quite a bit in January, but guess what? They were back up in February. So they will continue to adjust, but we think as we move this year, they will probably come down third or fourth quarter. With this, I, I would like to say use the current market as an opportunity. A good time to buy a home is when you need a home. You can find a good deal on a home even in an up market. I don't think we're in an up market right now. I think we're actually, we've been adjusting a little bit based upon your comments earlier about median sales price. As the demand softened when interest rates came down, I think the market has been adjusting a little bit. And markets, by the way, are very localized. My example is based upon national data. And keep in mind, for more localized information and data, turn to one of the two of these experts. They really are the local experts. And they will tell you much better what's happening in our market. But when you look at a market, what happens, it's very difficult to determine when the bottom of the market takes place. And I learned that from being a real estate appraiser. Sometimes if, if you look back, maybe six months later, you can say, guess what? That's when our market hit the bottom. It, it's impossible to say when you've reached the bottom of the market. We're not that good. Nobody's that good. Right? <laughs> what I think is happening is, is that our market is adjusting. And what is very common is, is that after you hit the bottom and rates come down, you might end up over here after the bottom where a seller is more confident, there's more competition, and guess what, there's lower rates. But by then, when everybody's jumped back in, you've already missed the bottom. I think we are somewhere over here, and we may already be at the bottom. We don't quite know, but we're somewhere in between here. Now is the better time to buy a home because sellers are potentially more fearful. There's less competition and potentially more choices. The last low that we had was probably January of 2012. And guess what happened? In the next year following that, appreciation nationwide was about 8% in 12 months. And inventory was over 2.4 million listings at that time in, in 2012. Right now, it's less than a million in 2023. And half of those listings are already under contract. As you were alluding to, even in this market, we're still, we're still dealing with short supply. A good time to buy a home is when you need a home. And if you're in a situation, maybe more before the bottom of the market, there might be more potential to negotiate. And it's a good time if you have a situation where there is less competition, maybe you do not have a 
multiple offer situation. Even if you do, ask for that seller credit. And you know, we can work with the seller credit very often up to 3% for the loan, very commonly. And that will help to cover your closing costs. It might help you with an interest rate buy down, whether it be a permanent buy down or a temporary buy down. If you were to even get a 2% seller credit on a $500,000 house, that's $10,000 to work with. Yeah, I mean, I broke that with my worst up-to-date information that's where it really helps to have a local expert in that point of view helping the buyers and especially where affordability is an issue it becomes very important I'm saying so. thanks Daryl for all that great information my pleasure the burning question for today is when if ever can we expect the interest rates to come down that's a good question we don't quite know but when you hear about the Fed raising rates and that type of thing just as a reminder, that's the federal funds rate. That's the overnight rate that banks charge one another to borrow from one another. And that also affects home equity lines of credit, credit cards, and auto loans. Mortgage rates are mutually exclusive. They're, they're separate, they're different. Mortgage rates tend to follow inflation figures. With the Fed tightening the Fed policy, that type of thing, the inflation figures are starting to come down. And as a result, interest rates could be up, they could be down some days, but as a result, the inflation figures are starting to come down. We anticipate that mortgage rates will probably continue to fall more towards third and fourth quarter of this year into the following year. I have a question. We went to training um, this past January, and it was mentioned that they could go to the fourth next year. What do you think about that? I think it's entirely possible. I, I think that interest rates were artificially low during COVID and, and leading up to it, that type of thing, I, I think it's highly unlikely that we will see interest rates in the 3% range again. For them to go lower than that, we would have to be in a negative rate environment, like they have in Japan, for instance. It would be highly unlikely. The markets have to stand on their own because the Fed was buying all the paper, which was keeping rates lower. What has happened has been an over-adjustment like a pendulum shift. As a result, they don't get it right the first time, not so often. <laughs> so what will happen is that with these shifts, it will over adjust and then it will come back down and the market and interest rates will eventually normalize. And I think we will see that in the future. Daryl, do you have anything else that you'd like to share? I'd just like to say that I think we're lucky to be in this industry and as realtors and lenders, I think this industry is awesome. There's nothing better than helping a first time home buyer to buy their first home. And it's absolutely the best way that I know to build wealth is to own real estate. I would want to convey to our audience out there that the process should be fun and exciting and we can help with that. I also feel that it's probably the biggest investment decision that you know a, a buyer has, has ever made or a borrower. It's not something we should underestimate with careful planning and if we're good listeners, we can help them to customize a loan and a solution and you guys can help them to find the perfect home. And, and if we do those things well and if we all work together, mm -hmm. there's nothing better. And this industry is really a lot of fun to be a part of. It is, I love it, so much fun. So for all of our viewers, if they wanna get a hold of you, what is the best way to reach you? Best way to reach me it would be the phone text, email, you can certainly reach me through uh, the two of these ladies. Uh, I have business operations not only in San Luis Obispo County, but throughout um, California and Los Angeles Great. County. Thank so, you. Thank you. Jen, I have one more question as we wrap up today. If there are sellers out there who are on the fence mm -hmm. about listing their home, do you have any advice that you'd like to share with them? Yes, definitely. I always like to take it case by case and let my clients know to consult with both of us just to make sure that that is the best decision moving forward. Thank you, Daryl, so much for all of the wonderful information you gave us today. Oh, it's my pleasure, and thank you for having me. And of course, we look forward to having you on here again next month for another market update. Thank you all so much for tuning in, and be sure to check out our latest episode about Charity Chat.